this is William Jones making videos about leaving religion. The purpose of the videos is to get you to think. Turn your brains on and think. Use logic, use reason, and realize that religion is fake. Okay, this is January 1st, 2020. And I'm doing this video. I did my first video in January 2017. It was the 3rd or the 4th. And that was the first video I did after I left religion. I have been doing Christian videos since January, January since uh, 20, 2009. But this was the first video I did as a non-believer. Okay? So, Happy New Year to everyone. I know with the Hebrews, you know, New Year doesn't start until the sliver of the first moon and the barley is a Aviv. So, somewhere later, but no, we're going by the Gregorian calendar. Everything goes by the Gregorian calendar here. It's the way of the world, so accept it, and that's how it's going to be. So, I just wanted to kind of speak on a few things. Not one topic in particular, but to bounce around and mention different things, okay? Uh, shoot. And, and, and local news, and, and not local, and, and recent news, we've had more church shootings. There was one where in Texas, where there was uh, three people shot, two of them were dead. One was dead, but they revived him at the hospital. And they believe one of the shooters, or the, the shooter was one of the three people. So they're investigating. I don't know what's going on with that. And there's the other one that everybody's talking about right now is uh, a shooter came into a church and began shooting, shot and killed two people until some other security at the church shot and killed the person that was doing the shooting. Now, when we get to the point where I, I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't get this. How can they not see God is not protecting you? He is not protecting the people in the church because the people in the church have to have security and bring guns. They still lost two. And they had to take the guy down. Church, if it was real, should be the when people claim, I claim sanctuary. You claim sanctuary from the law, but not from the rogue. The rogue don't care about the law. For instance, they say, you know, if you outlaw guns, only outlaws will have guns. Come on. Felons are not supposed to have guns, but do all felons not have guns? Come on. So the people that are abiding by the law won't have a gun, but will be uh, attacked or taken over by someone who has a gun who shouldn't have one. It's all, it's all messed up. It's just all messed up, really. Come on. So God didn't stop anything. The people in the church stopped it. Y'all should stop right then and be like, hold up. God ain't healing nobody. He's not protecting us. Why are we even serving this person? The church is not safe. It's safe when we make it safe, but it's not safe on its own. It's not like it's sacred ground with Moses talking to the burning bush, take off your sandals, for this is holy ground. Take your, take your shoes off. They come in the church killing people, shooting people. Then in New York, some guy with a machete, or machete, which other one they call it, chopping up the Jewish people. Where was God again? Where was their God? Nothing. 
There is no God protecting these people, but they are so blind that they can't see. They are not being protected by their invisible entity. You have to take it into your own hands to stop the perpetrator. God ain't he not giving a heads up like I got intel. Hey. This guy wearing a, a green shirt and whatever, he's coming in, he's trouble, stop him. No, he done shot and killed two people, y'all. See, he done shot and killed two people, now you kill him. Your, if your God was real to the believers, this should not be so. So for this video, I'm just going to release some of my thoughts I'll put in my phone. I mean, there's not a full topic, but let's talk about it. I send texts to myself about certain things. Cause I, I forget topics. I get topics and I forget them. This is one of those ones like the news. I'm not going to talk about one thing. I'm going to talk about a couple things, okay? Uh, Christmas is over, right? And I kind of did Christmas. Why? I'm going to tell you what I did at Christmas. I know everybody like all oh, the European, that's the white man, this, the white man, that, whatever. You know, I did it because I, I didn't do it when I was a Christian because I was under the Christian religion, but I did it because, you know what? I can do it. It's my goddamn house. And I can do whatever I want to do in my house. And so I did it. That's why I did it. I don't have to answer to anybody for what I do in the house where I pay the mortgage, this is my goddamn house. Understand that. I remember when uh, I went to get the skylights, uh, the women know about this, I don't know if the men do. The skylights are the, the strips that go on the sides of the door. You got your, you got your front door and you've got that, all that glass that go down on, this, on both sides and you cover it with a little itty bitty curtain about that wide from the top to the bottom, they're called skylights. And so I, I didn't know nothing about this stuff. When I got a house, I learned a lot of stuff about a house. Women know this stuff, men don't know. Men know how to fix stuff, women know the stuff inside the house. They don't know about the yard or whatever, some of them, but they know about the inside and all those things. So I got the skylights. I went to bed, uh, bed bath and beyond Talk with an older, older woman, older black woman, in fact, and I asked her about it. I said, "So what's the, what? Are, what are the the rules for when you put things up in your house? Like you know, if you hang a picture, how low should it be from the ceiling? How high from the floor? When when you hang things, what's the regulations? Uh, you know how things should be." So I, was, I asked her about the sky. I said, so how should things be? Well, what's the rules? The old black woman, she said, baby, there ain't no rules. That's your house. You make the rules. I was like, what? She said, that's your house. You pay the bills. You make the rules. Whatever, whatever rules you make, those are the rules. And I was like, Wow, that's why I would, I would see on on Facebook, Instagram and stuff, you know, I look at the pictures and, and, and it could be a chick up there with her, she's showing her ass. I'm looking at the backsplash, or I'm looking at the pictures on the wall, and I'm seeing pictures high up, low, and whatever, and I'm like, why? They, they're not following the rules. I realize now there are no rules. It's your house. You make the rules. However you like it, because you're paying the bills, then you do it. I don't have a wife here. This is my house. So however I like it, I do it. If I want a Christmas tree, guess what? I did it. It was funny when I did Halloween. I'm just talking to y'all. Halloween came up and my kids was like, mind you, they're in their 20s. The baby girl, 22, the oldest one, 27. 
And it was like, oh, now, so now you passing out candy. Because mind you, all their lives, with me in my early 20s, 30s, and uh, early 40s, Halloween is of the devil. Halloween, that's the devil. We don't do Halloween, that's the devil. That's the devil. And now I'm passing out candy. Why did I pass out candy? Did it have anything to do with something about somebody control? I did it because, guess what? Because I could do it. This is my house. I make the rules. And if I want to pass out candy, guess what? I could pass out candy. Guess what I did? I passed out candy. Now, mind you also, I ain't never passed out candy and bought a whole lot of damn candy to find out that a whole lot of kids don't come around like they did when I was doing all this stuff back in the 80s. So for me, I'm Radio Shack. I'm Radio Shack with everybody walking around with candy. And here I am. And, and hardly no kids coming. And it was cold. And their parents drive up. Ugh, I, I live in a cul-de-sac type joint, you know, they pull up in the cul-de-sac, uh, let the kids out. I see the parents in the car, the kids coming up in the cul-de-sac, right? And I'm like, what time they stop doing the Halloween? And I got all this candy. So I'm doing, uh, now I'm, I'm, I'm giving handfuls of candy because I got to get rid of this. I'm going to be eating this candy. I done bought all this candy. Where the kids at? Cause I haven't done ho this is my first Halloween in 2019. Christmas, I ain't doing no trees and all of that. I did it years ago, I did. But I, I, I got a tree, but I did it because why? Cause I could, this is my house. Don't judge me, the white man this, the white man that. I don't hear that shit. I did it, okay? I did it, whatever. Anyway, let me carry on with this. This is what I said about Christmas, though. For the believers, if Christmas is about Jesus, how come you never see a commercial, a Christmas commercial, about Jesus? Think about that. How many of you, and I'm not saying they have not, but my question is, leave it in the comments, I'm just saying, my question is, do you ever see any Christmas commercials talking about Christ? Or are the Christmas commercials about family, Santa, uh, the snowman, some reindeer? And Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer was a promotional thing that Sears did. That wasn't always there. Sears did the Rudolph thing and added it in. And they just, they just swallowed it up because Christmas is about capitalism. Christmas is about, this is Black Friday for this part, part of the year. It's a time of the year to sell stuff. It's a time of the year to sell stuff. It's not about no, the Savior was born because atheists celebrate Christmas, gathering with their families, exchanging gifts, coming together and everything. It has nothing to do with a Savior being born because more Hennessy is probably sold on Christmas. Really? On Christmas. Let me go on. Anyway, Christmas was originally called Saturnalia. It was a celebration that was done way before Christmas but because the Romans and others enjoyed it so much and, and they decided to blow up Christianity because it controlled people, 
They said, how can we keep this celebration of Saturnalia and continue with the Christian religion and keep them happy? Well, let's not call it, call it Saturnalia after Saturn, Saturn's day, Saturday. The planet Saturn, Saturn is L. Well, let's call it Christ Mass, Christ Mass, Christmas. Change the name, keep the religion. Keep it moving. Because in, even in early America, when they had early America, they did not celebrate Christmas. But when that, that thing, uh, the Ebenezer, Ebenezer Scrooge thing, what is it called? The whole thing was Scrooge. When they did that, that helped Christmas a whole lot. Now it's all about the money. Christmas is all about money. It has nothing to do with Jesus. It's all about the money. All right, let me keep it moving. For those of you that know the movie The Matrix, Neo went to go meet the uh, Oracle. And if you have not seen The Matrix, this might not help you at all. Right? So, Neo goes to meet the Oracle because Morpheus, which is another, which is actually the god of dreams, learn these things, y'all. Morpheus, played by Lawrence Fishburne, is in reality, I mean, in, in, in mythology, the god of dreams, Morpheus, and his ship was called the Nebuchadnezzar. Neo is the one, right? And Neo, N-E-O, is also O-N-E. He's the one. Some people think the one is the Christ. He was the anomaly of the Matrix, right? So he goes to meet the oracle, oracle, look at the words, and there's a little boy in there, and he has a spoon, and the spoon is sitting there, and, he, and the spoon bends to the side, and it bends straight, and, and Neo is looking like, wow, and the little kid, kid tells him, like, the trick to it is, is don't try to bend the spoon, right? J just realize that the spoon isn't real. Okay? So, so what believers do is because of their theology, they have to bend reality to fit their theology. Man, come, come on, man. Look, dude, we say this. Look, a virgin can't have a child unless somebody put some sperm up in them. No, but because that was God, and see now, it's on them to bend reality. I like that smoke. It was the Holy Ghost. Why he multiplied them fish and all that stuff? Because, you know, he, Jesus, he can do, he's God, he can do what he want to do. So now they are forced to warp or bend reality to fit their theology. They, they can't deal in reality because now they have to take reality and twist reality to fit their theology. Virgins don't have children. You do not multiply fish and bread. Because if that was the case, we need all these fishermen out here, right? You don't raise the dead. You do not. The blind don't see. The deaf don't hear without science today. Science, you don't walk on water and you are not murdered and come back to life. But they are forced to bend that spoon. That spoon is reality. There is no spoon. Tell them that. 
There is no spoon. You are forced to take that spoon and bend it to fit your theology in order for it to work with absolutely zero proof. How much proof? Zero proof. There's no proof to back up any of this stuff. In fact, let me, let me get on that. So I was on Facebook. And we're talking with this one guy. And I brought, I brought up uh, somebody put this foolish, they make these foolish little writings. Talking about the, the Bible is the most accurate book in history. Which is false. There's over 25,000 archaeological claims to prove that it's real, which is false. Which is false. So I, I show a book that I have called The Bible on Earth, written by Israel Finkelstein and, and another scholar. They're scholars at universities, and they created a book using their, their information and the information from many other books and sources. It's not just like, this is what we're, we're saying. No, they're taking, in the back of the book, I don't know you. They're taking the sources of many other books, and it's in the back, to, uh, back of the book, where they got their information for other stuff. They, you got the asterisk. This is where we got it from. No one is claiming this stuff. No one is claiming this stuff. And to understand this, I want, I want all of you to understand this. When certain, let's, let's say this, scholars say there was a historical Jesus, this is what they're saying. There was some guy that rebelled against the government of the day, Rome. And a lot of people disagreed with the government too, and they followed this guy. But Rome took that guy and killed him as they killed everyone in crucifixion. It's, this wasn't something special. Oh, we're just going to take this guy and put him on crucifixion. Because even in the Gospels, Jesus had a, a, a thief over here and a thief over here. He wasn't up there by himself. There were other people out there with him. Right? So the story is, there was a guy who was a rebel against the government like we have now he was crucified and died oh but this guy came back from the dead no he didn't that's some stuff that was made up later he wasn't the only one that died like that the only one that was a rebel you just picked this one if, if you knew how to subjectively Read through the Gospels and see how they protect one Jesus. You'd understand there was many of these characters all through the Bible. That'll be a whole nother video. And I got to keep researching the damn Bible, even though I'm not even in Christianity no more. Just to show people who don't know the Bible, the Bible. I got to keep reading this stuff. To tell y'all, my stuff is boxed up. I, I just kind of, I got, I got to unbox some stuff just to teach this stuff. I thought I was done with it, but I'm not done with it if I, that's what I know and got to teach those that don't know. Jesus wasn't real. Crucifixion was Crucifixion was the normal thing. Thousands got crucified, not just Jesus. 
Oh, he suffered the worst thing ever. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Because he got, he goddamn gave up the ghost and was done with it. And Jesus was, he wasn't the worst. More talk. That's no different than the mustard seed is not the least of all seeds. Read about it. What else I say here? Ooh, this is a good one. I like this one. Watch this. What if I punished you for something you didn't know because you didn't know it? Let me go. I'm going to say that again. Listen, listen. What if I punished you for something you didn't know? Because you didn't know it. How just would I be? I'm going to punish you for this. Why? Because that's the rules. Who told me the rules? Those are the rules. Why well, didn't know the rules? Well, you should have known it. But I didn't know it. So, you're going to die for it anyway. So what about all the people that died before Jesus came? That's what the believers. What about all the people that died before the Jesus myth? That oh I was fuck, I was born before Jesus. Now I gotta die for that. Why? Because I was born in the wrong time. And guess what? All this stuff happened. I was over here. What happened? I ain't know it, but what? It happened, so what? I got to go to hell, why? Because I ain't know it. Why? Because I ain't know it. I ain't know it. I got to die because I didn't know it. Right. That's crazy. You're going to be punished. You're going to be punished. Severely for your crime. What's my crime? Not knowing. Your crime is not knowing. But even in your book you said, how can they not know unless a preacher tell them? So we ain't know? Was there a preacher? No. Then the preacher came and told you. Did you back the preacher up with some proof? Did you back the preacher up with proof? Yeah, the proof was he told you. Okay, that, that's all good, but did the preacher No, No. So the preacher ain't give us no proof. The preacher proof was he told us. So that's a car. I mean, a car man can tell you anything. How do we know? How do we know? Just from him telling us. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to be tortured for eternity because I didn't know. Right? Okay, that makes no sense to me. So with that, we shall go on to the next thing. Okay, here's another one dealing with believers, right? They'd be like, so why did you leave God? Or why did you leave religion? And you tell them as a grown person why you left religion. And what they do is tell you why you really left religion. Come on, talk to me. No, 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 no. What happened was, see, God didn't do what you wanted him to do. 
and so you left. No. See, really, what you wanted to do was sin, so you left religion. No, you believed the lies of what other people said, and so you left religion. No, the devil got into your mind. And that's why you left religion. When you love God to them, good love God to them. They they don't hear what you said. Goes back to the last one. They, they are warped. They don't hear what you are saying. They hear what they want to hear. I had this dude and in, in one of our groups, and uh the uh questions Christians can't answer or whatever. And 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 the, and the sister brother the dude asked her, So why'd you leave religion? She said, I found out it was fake. I found out it was fake and I left religion. Okay, I hear you, but so why did you really leave religion? I'm like Bro, did you, you ain't see what she just said? She said it was fake. And so she laughed. No, but that, that can't be the reason. See, you, what, you didn't, no, see, you can't even have intelligent conversations with certain believers because they don't hear what you are saying. If I'm telling you why I left, that's exactly why I left. Don't tell me why I left. I just told you why I left. I found that it's fake. Do you pay my mortgage? or rent, power, gas, electric bill, then don't tell me nothing. I told you what I told you. You asked me and I told you. Don't, don't act like you are superior to me and tell me that's not exactly why you left. This is why you left. Don't talk down on me. I told you why I left. Because when I deal with them, trust and believe. They ain't read that Bible. They don't know that Bible. When we start getting to the Bible, they want to go to other texts. Huh? Well, it said, so Tacticus said, Josephus said, somebody else said, no, no, but when you got that track printed up, it said what the King James Bible said. So why, why are we going to the other stuff? What's the other stuff for now? Because when you was talking, when you was talking all that rah-rah, it came straight out of the Bible. It came straight out of the Bible. Now all of a sudden, we got to go to some other texts. Like I said before, if the Bible is not saying what it means, then it means nothing. If I got to go to another book to validate this book, then this book means absolutely nothing. Well, you, you got to read what Josephus said. You got to read this over here. They said, this person said this. But the Bible is supposedly the infallible Word of God. You know how that makes sense. The book don't say what it means. We need another book for the book. Watch this. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this one. And I can't remember exactly if it was a movie or a TV show. But there was a something where there was a boss. 
almost like the Wizard of Oz, but let's just say there was a boss. And in in this office, they had a, in this office, they had the office of the boss. And the regular people could not go into the office of the boss. They could not go into the office of the boss. Only certain people could enter into the boss, into the office of the boss, right? And they would come out of the office and say, he don't want to be bothered. He don't want to talk. He don't want to say nothing, whatever. But they would say what the boss said. So to the other employees, they never saw the boss. They never saw the boss. But they heard what he said from the so-called higher-ups. This is what the boss said. And they would tell that to the other employees and they were like, oh, can I talk to the boss? No, you can't talk to him. He don't want to talk to you. You talk to me and I'll tell it to him. But you cannot see the boss. So no one saw the boss. You only saw the people that spoke for the boss. And then somehow, someone went into the office and saw there was no one there. The Wizard of Oz all again. I'm the great and powerful Wizard of Oz. Until you found out he was some dude who was a nobody. Pretending to be somebody. Blowing smoke and fire and skin. Using a fear tap. Fear tactic. Oh, do what I say because I'm not. Uh, and you find out that. And that's how religion is. You got the popes. The popes say what they want to say. There's no God behind that. You have these pastors. There's no God behind them. And then, and then these, these dang on churches in 2020. Telling, telling churches, to, telling members to give $2,020. So your year will be prosperous. Because it's 2020. They love it as the years go up. So give $2,020 so your year will be prosperous while they're driving Benzes and Lexuses and BMWs and Bentleys and Roses, uh, uh, yeah, living in, in mansions. Give them this extra money. That's not a tithe. Uh, a tithe is not... A round number so everybody give that's not a tithe that's something you instigated but they won't read the Bible to realize it's not real it's not real if you can't give two thousand and twenty dollars give two hundred and twenty dollars because you know you ain't getting most of that 2000 But you will get that $220. Crooks. 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 Give 2000 Who said? That's not even a tithe. A tithe is 10%. Which that's fake anyway. But a tithe is 20%. Why do I have to give the exact number of the year we just entered? If not, then give $220. Crooks. And, then, and my people told me uh, a 
local church said. They was having a banquet. If you want to sit close to the pastor and his family, those tickets close to him, $800 a ticket. So, do we get to see the Holy Ghost? God, Jesus, or is this about you? Because if you was called to preach, why is money your main focus? $800. But if you were called to preach, as most of you lying pastors say, why do you have a salary? And please show me in the Bible, please, anybody, show me in the Bible where a pastor is even relevant. I did a video on pastors. There is nowhere in the Bible where the role of a pastor is even relevant. Show me. Name one pastor in the Bible. If I said, name a prophet in the Bible, you'd be like, oh, Abraham, Isaiah, you know what I'm saying, uh, Elijah, Elijah, uh, they'll, they'll, name, they'll name prophets, right? Name apostles in the Bible, oh, James, John, Peter. You know, John and James the Lesser. Uh, you know, they'll name apostles. They'll name those. Right? Say, name me one pastor by name in the Bible. Because the word pastor in the singular is nowhere in the Bible. Name me one pastor by name and then show me their role as a pastor in the Bible. And I will guarantee you they cannot do it. People, listen. Ask your Christian people. Name me one famous pastor in the Bible. And then tell me where it ever said they were to be in charge. Never. According to the Bible, according to the Bible, the apostles are first, the prophets are second, and the teachers are third. Prophet, there is not one pastor mentioned in the Bible that anybody cares about. Or bishop. So bishops Make the pastors, show me this in the Bible. It's not there. Why? Because it's fake. It's fake. Show it to me. I would I will put it on the screen if it was real. And guess what? It's not. It's not. You know what? Those are the things I want to talk about. people, actual people. So what, what famous pastor is named in the Bible? No. So, so please show me in the, in the Bible, where does it say the role of a pastor to be over all these people? Please show me this because it's, it's nowhere, it's imaginary. It's nowhere in the Bible. There is no pastor named in the Bible. There was no pastor doing anything in the Bible. And I did in an old video, pastors, in the plural, is named seven times. And six of those times in the Old Testament, it's all bad. It's named one time, I think, in Ephesians. Pastor says nothing to do with nothing. But, but guess what? Christians don't read the Bible, so they don't know nothing. I'm gonna end this video. Come here. I'm gonna 
before I stand up, cut the shit off before I'm. It's just, it's just me. Peace, y'all. Peace.